Welcome to Big Dan's Air Gun Review Channel. You may remember last episode we was looking at the Remington Express Compact, one of the latest brake barrel rifles to enter the market today. Well, today we're going to do something a bit different and travel back to the past and have a look at one of what's meant to be the greatest PCPs the BSA has ever made. The BSA Super 10 Super Carbine. First off, let's talk about how the rifle looks. Personally, I wouldn't say that this was a beautiful looking rifle. To elaborate on that, I'll say that it's not a beautiful looking rifle in the same vein as, say, the latest Daystate Super Mega Wolf 1001s, which, say what you like about them, the, I personally could never say they wasn't a good looking gun, because they, they clearly are, to be fair, in my opinion anyway. This to me looks more like a hunter's tool. It's designed to do a job. It had seemed quite at home sitting in the back of Farmer John's old 96 Discovery or Defender, and it wouldn't seem completely out of place, like, say, one of them Stick of Rock style air arms target guns or day states probably would. I think the main thing that does it for me that gives me this impression is that there's a rather large slab of the forestock there with nothing on it. I think if that had a design or checkering or something on the side there, it would definitely give the rifle a bit more flair. There is some checkering on the grip though, which still feels nice, and we need to consider that this, well, the, at least the first model, Super 10, was made in 1996, and technically the Super 10 can trace its lineage back to a prototype rifle that BSA made back in 1986. Overall, I genuinely don't think I could actually complain about the look of the rifle, and I think I actually quite like its genuine, honest appeal when it comes to the looks department. Well, that's a tick with its first uh, section of this review with the looks. Let's see how it gets on with features, handling, and then performance. First off, let's talk about how the rifle looks. Personally, I wouldn't say that this was a beautiful looking rifle. To elaborate on that, I'll say that it's not a beautiful looking rifle in the same vein as, say, the latest Daystate Super Mega Wolf 1001s, which say what you like about them, the, I personally could never say they wasn't a good looking gun, because they, they clearly are, to be fair, in my opinion anyway. This to me looks more like a hunter's tool. It's designed to do a job. It had seemed quite at home sitting in the back of Farmer John's old 96 Discovery or Defender, and it wouldn't seem completely out of place, like say one of them stick of rock style air arms target guns or day states probably would. I think the main thing that does it for me that gives me this impression is that there's a rather large slab of the forestock there with nothing on it. I think if that had a design or checkering or something on the side there, it would definitely give the rifle a bit more flair. There is some checkering on the grip though, which still feels nice, and we need to consider that this, well, the, at least the first model Super 10 was made in 1996, and technically the Super 10 can trace its lineage back to a prototype rifle that BSA made back in 1986. Overall, I genuinely don't think I could actually complain about the look of the rifle, and I think I actually quite like its genuine, honest appeal when it comes to the looks department. Well, that's looks out of the way, so now let's talk about features. Up front, we have a 200cc body bottle, which in this variant of the Super 10 gives out 155 full power shots in 2.2. We've also got BSA's own silencer, which helps finish off the looks of the rifle, in my opinion. Although you can't see it, along here somewhere, we've also got the BSA Super 10's cigar-shaped regulator, which helps keep consistent airflow when uh, firing the rifle. Back here is my favourite part of the rifle, the two-stage adjustable trigger. With this, you can adjust the length of pull and the overall pull weight itself. I even, despite the way it looks, I even like the overall feel of the trigger. It, BSA like to call it their match trigger. I'm not so sure as I go that far but I definitely wouldn't say it was too far behind the record units or triggers such as those. It really is a lovely feeling trigger even today. We also have the adjustable butt pad at the rear of the rifle which makes the rifle exceptionally nice to shoulder as it can be set to the shooter's preference. The rifle should also come with BSA's 10 shot self indexing magazine which feels deceptively sturdy seeing as it's pretty much mostly a completely metal object, but, as I said, deceptively, we'll be getting back to him later. As you can see, the BSA Super 10 Super Carbine is a bolt-action PCP rifle. The actual action itself, I've got to be honest, is beautifully smooth and slick, to the point where, as you can see, I can actually cycle the bolt with my thumb, with no major effort at all. Simply adjust the safety with this little sliding toggle here. As you can see at the moment, the rifle is in safe mode. If you want to fire, you simply 
do two clicks to the right, like so, and you see the red dot there, which means it's ready to rock and roll. We will go a bit further into detail with this safety later on, where I'll give my overall verdict, which you probably tell my tone of voice, what do I think about it. Moving on, next up, handling. Starting off with rifle handling, we'll start with the positives and things I really like about the BSA Super 10 Super Carbine. Number one of which, I think it's an absolute treat to load. First off, simply make sure the rifle's safe. Working the bolt is an absolute treat, as you can see there. Next, all you need to do, turn the rifle around, load the mag in, like so. Close the bolt, and you're ready to go. Releasing the mag, also, a process that I quite like, uh, quite like the feel of. Bolt back and locked, safety. Push on this side here, oh, oh, did you hear the magazine then? Again, we'll be moving on to that later. Push the uh, mag here, mag comes straight out. Simply the pressure of your thumb releases the mag. I know it's, it's silly, but I, I, I don't know how to put this without sounding strange. I like the feeling when you load the mags in these rifles, that, that ramp there. I love the feeling of that. It keeps it keeps the, 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 the magazine secure, but it's also, <laughs> silly as it sounds, really satisfying to use. Anyways, stupidness aside, moving on. So how does the BSA Super 10 feel when it actually comes to raising it to your shoulder? Well, really, really good. I'm not going to lie to you. It does feel nice and sturdy and solid. I'd say weight-wise it feels slightly heavier than the new R10s, but it's really not that far behind, to be fair. Weight distribution feels good. It feels more or less where my hand is right now, about there, along here somewhere, which does feel pretty tremendous, especially considering that great big bottle and silencer on the end. And to be honest with you, yeah, it's, it's really nice. I think with this sort of rifle, it's definitely the Indian and not the Arrow. And now I say that and think about that, I'm going to regret saying that when it comes to the accuracy tests. But to be honest with you, yeah, it's quite nice. Still a girly PCP, but it's quite nice. I could live with it. There is one thing, though, that I, well, I can almost not live with. Uh, I find it quite unbearable, and you might have been able to tell, or tell now what I'm about to talk about by the way I was speaking earlier, my tone of voice. And to be honest with you, it's the safety. I do not like this safety. It's a little stiff. I don't like the way there's two stages. I prefer if it was just on or off. Whereas here you can see it clicks twice before you can really fire it. And to be honest with you, I don't like it because if you're in a hunting situation, it doesn't really come to the hand all that well. You have to take your, either your hand off the, the trigger and adjust it, which again isn't necessarily a bad thing, in fact in a way you could say it's a safe thing, but personally it takes time and movement and I don't really like that, especially when you're trying to stay as still as possible. I mean you can try and do it ah, with your other hand, but it's not really that comfortable. It's doable, but it's not my favourite safety in the world, I'm being honest with you, and it, it feels okay, I mean it feels reasonably high quality, I mean it's a safety at the end of the day, but if I had to speak the honest truth, I think I would actually honestly rather have one of the cheaper end rifles safeties with the small safety blade in front of the trigger, because at least that way you can simply flick to fire or pull it back when you want it to be safe. There's very little movement, whereas with this thing you've either got to turn it on its side and flick it forwards or pull it back or use your other hand and sort of feel for it, especially when you're looking down the scope and that's it. Overall, you could live with it. But, and maybe there's people out there that it, it's probably second nature to them, to be fair. Like I said, I'm a Springer man. I'm not really into, not really into my PCPs too much, but it sort of bothers me a little bit, this safety. So it's, it, I thought it was worth mentioning, at least giving my opinion on it, unbiased opinion. And yeah, that's how I feel about that. It does its job, but definitely could be better, I think. Now for the bit that we've all been waiting for, performance and accuracy. We'll be shooting at this target from 25 yards away. You may be able to see just over there, you may or may not be able to see I should say, due to the uh, probably quality of the uh, camera here, but, and the GoPro's lack of zoom, but you should see the gun sideways on its rest over there, and you should also see the seat which I'll be firing from. All shots will be taken from an unrested position, usually I like to do this to show recoil, which I know this rifle shouldn't, anyway, shouldn't have, being a PCP, but hopefully we might be able to show off how maybe the weight distribution may affect accuracy. So, without any further ado, 
let's crack on. Well, here we have the results of our little accuracy test. As you can see, there's actually two groups on the scorecard, and there's a very good reason for that. Those with sharp hearing amongst us will hear that there wasn't an entire 10 shot mags worth of pellets shot during that first group, and I'll get onto that later as to why that happened. Either way, that group, as messy as it looks at the minute, is perfectly, pretty much perfectly covered up by a one, pen, one pence piece. There you go. The second group is the full 10 shots, and this is pretty much a 5 pence group. Again, this is done at 25 yards, and the scope is a little ASI Super Scope 4x40. Trust me, Super Scope, it ain't. Might be good in the day, not so good now. Yeah, but that's the group that we got with this gun, the two groups. Again, this one, there's actually, I believe, 8 pellets cycled through here. That's the full 10. I'm pretty happy with those, <laughs> I've got to be honest. The main thing that I have to say about this sort of gun though, these PCPs when it comes to this accuracy, you may remember, well it's my only other review so far, but the Remington Express Compact had a very similar group to this little 5 pence group here. The only difference being, I did have a couple of flyers with it and I'll, I'll discuss that now. With a spring gun you really do, unless it's a highly tuned spring gun, you really do have to concentrate and artillery hold the crap out of them. This was literally pretty much, when I learned with this, I was getting pretty much one pence there. And that was, I'd just come back from setting the target up and I was just sitting back down again. My, my heart rate was pumping a little bit and to be honest, I probably should have sat down and waited for that to rest a bit. But this was, that was simply more or less just yanking the trigger, not knowing what to expect. It's more or less the same with this one. I wasn't practicing any fancy holds, as I say repeatedly, I'm not a PCP shooter, I don't know. I'm fairly certain that you probably do have to keep your um, follow through with the rifle, very similar to a spring gun. But that was pretty much just sitting down, squeezing the trigger and, oh, it went in the same hole, sort of thing. I'm not a PCP expert, I'm a spring man. But to be honest with you, that was, to me, that, that was a fairly careless group. And it still fits in a five pence piece. And I know for a fact that if you know what you're doing with PCPs, you will probably get a tighter group than that. But yeah, I am very, very, very impressed with that. 25 yards, especially, I know I keep bragging on about it, but to be honest with you, it is true. For a, a 1996 air rifle, or at least the first model Super Sport was a, a Super 10, sorry, was a 1996 air rifle. That's good. That's really good. And that was done with the JSB Exact jumbos in 2.2. I believe they're the 5.52s? Yeah, 5.52 pellets. I'm pretty damn happy with that. I have also tried the Remington Barracudas through it, and they also grouped incredibly well, but they seem to be a little bit heavy. Whereas for these, with this sort of range, 25 yards, that's absolutely top notch. I'm sure the Remington Barracudas are an excellent hunting round with probably better knockdown than the JSBs. When it comes to actual target work, come on, everybody knows you can't really beat a JSB, can you? Let's be fair. I know I shouldn't be saying that, but it's true. You, you can't, to be fair. But overall, that's the performance of the BSA Super 10, Super Carbine. Definitely don't think there's much to complain about here. But when it comes to complaints, that's for the next section of the review. And one that I don't really do is most of the rifles that I, I have and review are rifles that I stock myself being a dealer. And that at the minute, for this rifle in particular, is reliability. And we'll move on to that now. So I don't see many reviews really covering this section, to be honest, when it comes to air gun ownership. But if you ask me, it's a pretty damn big deal. And when it comes to older guns like this, I think it definitely, it's an area that needs to be covered. We'll start with the BSA Super Carbine by saying, is it a reliable rifle? It's sort of one of those things where, how long is a piece of string? If you get one that's well looked after, which this one, as you can see, it's in pretty good nick. If you get one that's well looked after, they're pretty good, to be fair. Especially you get some models out there that have been sent off to uh, see John Bokit, and he works absolutely wonders on these guns, pretty much transforming them, to be honest with you, into the, the tremendous air guns. But... I have to say, in general, there are things that definitely need to be looked out for when looking at a Super 10. 
one of the main things, <laughs> as I've, I've mentioned about three times in this review but I haven't actually told you what I mean, is the mag. The mag looks lovely and solid, it's metal ore. Right on cue, did you hear that then? It's lovely, it's solid, it's metal, but have you, as you've just heard then, I before I've, I recorded this, I cycled it onto say the fifth pellet, where the fifth pellet would be in the mag, and you heard it then, I literally, I picked it up, and it's already, where it's gone loose with time, it's skidded straight back to the first pellet in the group, in the mag. These are a major issue with the older guns, and they will, they, they, most of them on the market today, these have been replaced, to be honest with you. I've still got the original one in this. It's pretty good. It, 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 it doesn't skip much. It, it did with that group. This is what I mean. It's, it's inconsistent. It skipped with this one. I missed two pellets, whereas this one was absolutely bang on. They do need replacing, and it does need mentioning. As with all second-hand air rifles used, older air rifles, there are bits and bobs that will go wrong, I'm sure. It's not just the BSA Super Carbine. There are many rifles in general where bits and bobs, uh, they get pretty popular for going wrong. Depending on the rifle, it might be a different piece. The other thing which I've replaced myself with this Super Carbine is the regulator. Now, the reg in this was originally, when you plug it in, plug the bottle in, you'd hear a whoosh and the air would be leaking out. I originally thought, occasionally they say, replace the O-ring on the buddy bottle itself. Of course, as they say, sod's law, it's not that. The O-ring was absolutely fine. I've had to replace the entire regulator. Now the cost for these tend to fluctuate around the £100 mark, but that's if you can find one. My one I had to hunt around on eBay and luckily I found a chappy on there, a lovely fellow on there who uh, he had one going uh, used and I told him about the, obviously because of the barrel length I'll put out different powers even if it's the same regulator, told him about the rifle and thankfully he tuned it down to 11 and a half foot pound and it works in this thing flawlessly but again you have to budget for that if you're having one of these rifles. It's an older gun, and parts like Regulator in these sadly do tend to wear out, as mine is proof of. I've also heard horror stories about the Regulators themselves actually cracking, but with my one, I think it's a simple seal job inside of the Reg. So then why didn't I repair it? Well, that's because, <laughs> if you don't know about the Super 10 Regulator, the Cigar Reg, which is in this one, they're an absolute bugger to take apart. You need to make collets and such just to crack the thing open and be fairly handy with a lathe. Uh, at least that's most of the things I've seen have recommended. You make your own collets and such and break it open using those, but you can't simply do it with a spanner and pull it apart or unscrew anything. It is a serious job, and although many people say having something over-engineered is a good thing, like many older German cars in the past, not so sure about the newer ones, um, this is over-engineered in a bad way because it takes a lot of specialist equipment to an extent to crack them open, and in the end I just thought, do you know what? So me bodging around with it, I'm going to put in a brand new regulator in there and see how it goes from there. Um, which brings me on to my, another, uh, my other point regarding the regulator and that is that you really do struggle to source them these days. Companies like John Nibs who pretty much cover everything regarding, I think it's mainly BSAs but he does do lots of other bits and bobs as well. Um, John Nibs no longer, even he doesn't supply the regs for these anymore. Um, they do bits and bobs to them, but not the entire regulator itself. As I said, I got very lucky and sourced mine from eBay. A, a fellow on there helped me out, but it's definitely it's worth considering. Um, I, I have to tell the truth. You need to watch out for its regulators and these things. These are about they're about forty pounds, thirty pounds to replace these mags. Which I mean, it's not bad. It definitely it does need doing. Let me see if I can get it to do it again. No. Nope. Nope. There we go. That's what I'm telling you about. It, it's inconsistent. One minute. Oh. No, 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 it didn't. It's inconsistent. One minute it'll hold its 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 uh, pellet, and the next minute it will just straight to shot one. And yeah, you got to fiddle and faff about reloading it again, which is like I said, exactly what happened with the group here. But yeah, I definitely think it's worth mentioning reliability on certain air guns, especially the older ones when they some of them get a track record. Some of them are phenomenal, to be honest. The Virac air rifles and the the Air Arms series of air guns. There's been a couple of Friday night jobs, but to be honest with you, they are pretty flawless. And oh, I don't know if you got that or not. <laughs> I didn't even touch it then. It skipped to the end. Oh dear. But the air arms they're tremendous pcp rifles they they usually got a pretty good track record bsa there's good and bad um the super 10 isn't bad some say they're actually built better internally than the r10 again i haven't owned an r10 long enough to be able to comment on that 
Um, I've heard the Mark 1's had quite a lot of regulator issues as well, but to be honest with you, yeah, it's weigh this up when you look at a, a Super 10. Definitely do some thorough tests. If it's not advertised that the mag can be finicky, definitely have a play with the mag. Make sure it feels tight. Like I said, Marlon even put it on the table and left it alone and it skipped. Um, make sure that the mag is tight. Obviously, make sure when you're testing it, take the bottle out put it back in, make sure that it's it's holding its air. You should be okay. The other thing I've heard is that the triggers, apparently, I've got lucky, this one's absolutely beautiful, but the triggers can get um, a little bit soft um, as time goes on and they get taken away to, again, John Bokit and people like that who work their magic and keep them lovely and crisp. But this one feels absolutely top notch and it's standard, it's never come apart or anything like that. But overall, I'll end this little segment here. I don't want to ramble on for too long and, and turn this into a BSA bashing video because I don't, I don't mean to and you've seen it is a, it is an incredibly accurate gun, especially considering the crappy scope that's on top of there. But it's reliability issues, they are definitely worth mentioning. So now we'll move on to the final verdict. So what's the overall verdict then of the BSA Super 10 Super Carbine? Does it still stand up to all the rest all these years later on? I think yes it does, um, but also there are definitely some things you need to watch out for. We'll start with the positives, and to begin with, we'll just say accuracy, in my opinion, is absolutely spot on. This is coming from somebody, I don't shoot PCPs that much. Obviously, I try every rifle that I get in, um, but I, I'm, I am a Springer man. Um, I love my 97, and I love my little XS19 brake barrel, which could be the next review. Um, but this, this, I don't shoot them, and even then, with not particularly careful trigger control or anything like that, I'm getting pretty damn good groups, in my opinion. This group again is only eight shots with this one penny group here, and here we've got the five pence full ten shot mag which went through. It is a lovely gun to shoot. The trigger is absolutely fantastic in my opinion. It's, it's uh, how would I put this? It's not quite on the same level as a record in my opinion. It might just be behind, and I say that because it's nice and light to pull, but it feels ever so slightly. I wouldn't say doughy but it, it's hard to explain. The length of pull is perhaps a little bit too long for me, even on, depending on the setting, a uh, harder setting or a shorter pull, it still feels a little bit too long for my liking, at least this particular trigger anyway. But again, that's down to preference, to be honest, more than anything. Some people might like a, a longer length of pull or heavier pull or things like that, but the, the trigger is very, very, very good, and I do like it, but you can't quite, I can't quite get it to fit me like a kind of record trigger. I think it's a good looking rifle, it's not a fantastic looking rifle, but it is a good looking rifle. I think if you saw one of these out on the range and you saw somebody shooting one of these, I reckon most people would say, yeah, it's a nice looking gun, can I have a go at it, sort of thing. It's not repulsive. It doesn't scream, oh my god, I'm beautiful, like some day states, like they do. They're very eye-catching sort of rifles. This isn't that sort of rifle. This is, as I've said earlier multiple times, this is a workman's tool. This is, if anything, a farmer's rifle and a serious vermin hunting rifle. Um, it, it is a nice looking gun. The checkering is nice, even after all these years. The checkering is nice, the wood grain is lovely, and the actual cheek piece is finished really, really well. It handles really well as well. The uh, it, It's not heavy. It, there's a tiny little bit of weight there, but it's literally tiny. It's, as I said earlier, it's marginally heavier, I'd say, than an R10. Um, to me, though, that just makes the rifle feel more solid in my opinion. Um, you've also got, which helps in handling quite a bit as standard, you've got the adjustable butt pad there so you can fit it to your shoulder like no matter who you are. Uh, I always appreciate that on, the, on a gun. I know the Hatsan AT44 has come with those as well, uh, which I didn't actually expect when I first got to handle one. Um, and I, I did really appreciate that. So any gun with that always scores high marks in my book when it comes to handling. Um, the bolt is buttery smooth. It really is really nice to use. Whichever Birmingham little friend made this gun, they definitely did a fantastic job on the bolt. That is that is great. I really do like that. And it's also, I know it sounds silly, but it's uh, it's also quite satisfying to load. Um, putting that mag in there, for some reason, I, I genuinely enjoy that. I don't know why. It's weirdly therapeutic for some reason. Sorry, I'm rambling now. Uh, so that's that's the positives out the way. You've got the accuracy. Oh, you've also got the shot count at 155 shots with mine. Um, the actual advertised, what they say a 2.2 should get, I think is 150 if I've done my research right. So mine's actually overperforming uh, in that regard, which I'm uh, pretty chuffed about. Um, so now we'll move on to, I won't say the negatives, but things that, I suppose negative, but things that you need to sort of watch out for. And number one, I'd say is, the main thing you want to change is that silencer. 
it, it should be called a loud enough, I think, because it can't be any louder if you didn't have that thing on there. Just to put it into perspective, I have, I've loaded the rifle. I'll just turn the safety off and just, just have a listen to this, okay? This is, this is with the silencer on. That's pretty loud. <laughs> that's that's fairly loud. Um, that needs to be replaced. It is the standard BSA silencer. I'm, I'm pretty 100% certain on that. Um, it's not particularly great in my opinion. And as you've heard there, it's 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 not particularly quiet. But yeah, get a new one on there, and I'm sure it'll be an absolute whisper quiet. Like I know it might seem blasphemy to some, but put a Virac or something silencer on there, and I'm sure it'll be absolutely fantastic. Um, other negative, not negative, but again something to look out for is it's the dark horse in the room sitting in the corner it's it's the reliability and this is an older gun this is a very where's pcps and such go this is very old and as you saw the mag skips on this one only occasionally like with these groups the mag skipped here on the one penny group but it didn't skip here on the 10 pence group one pen five pence sorry whoops uh and to be honest with you there's also the regulator as well which needs mentioning I did have to replace that. The first one that was on there was leaking. And you do need to consider all these things when trying or buying one of these. Definitely put the mag in your hand, cycle it a few times, see how it feels, see if it feels positive or not. And obviously, if you're buying one, take the bottle off, maybe re-screw it back in, see if you can hear any air escaping or such like that. You need to put it through your paces to make sure it's absolutely running 100%. Um, these aren't really... Well... I, yeah. I will class it as a negative for me, but I'm sure there's many out there that, that can get along with it and may even love it, but I do not like the safety. You may not be able to see it, it's getting quite dark now, but the safety on this gun, you have to either take your hand off, like I said earlier, off the trigger to get to it, or you have to sort of fumble your left hand underneath and sort of reach around and, and grab it and... and adjust it there, switch it on and off there. And I don't like this idea. I would much rather if they just went for the simple toggle design. You see on some brake barrel rifles there, just flick it on and off. It, it comes to your finger perfectly. It feels like it should be there. I'm also a huge fan. I know you wouldn't be able to do it with this rifle because of the bolt arrangement here, but I'm also a huge fan of the Hatsan and Webley style safeties where you have the toggle that sticks out here and you can simply take your hand off and quickly pull it back or push it forwards when you're ready to fire. I do like that. This one, I don't like the safety. It, as well as being hard to reach, it is quite notchy and for some reason, instead of just off and on, it feels like there's three stages to it. Um, there's three times it clicks. I'll say I'll put it that way. Um, other negatives, not really negative, but I know I said I like the looks, and I do, it does look workmanlike, but it wouldn't have hurt. I'm sure there's people out there that have done this to their own Super 10s if they just put a little design or something there. It looks a bit of a slab there. The grain's lovely, don't get me wrong, but the actual wood on this, this particular example is really, really nice. Um, but if they put something there, it would give it a little bit of flair and a little bit of class, and might not make it look quite so boring, perhaps. But again, that's not me saying it's an ugly gun. It's not beautiful, but I do appreciate the looks that, that it's going for. It's it's a tool, basically. It's not something you'll find in a tartan bag sort of thing. It's it's a tool rifle. It's a, it's a manly man's rifle designed to do a job. But would I recommend somebody buy one for a rifle to use today? Yeah, I would, actually. Um, Again, you have to make sure it's running right, and bear in mind that parts such as regulators are getting really hard to come by now. Um, they tend to, the going rate for them, I think, is around the £100 mark. Um, and if yours does go wrong, excuse me, uh, it, it should be... It, it, it's hard to repair. You need to make special tools and such to get it cracked open and repaired, and I did get in touch with um, the air gun centre, and to send it off, they quoted me around... Well, to get it sent off and repaired, they was quoting me around, say, £150 to get the rifle looked at, and to be honest with you, no, the, um, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't have to, but again, that's the negatives out of the way, you do have to check for reliability on these older guns and these older BSAs, it seems, in general, uh, but you should definitely own one, um, it's accurate, very accurate, it's easy to be accurate with it, it's, I think it's a fairly iconic looking rifle as well, it's designed to do a job, uh, it does it well, it shoulders nicely, it feels nice in the hand, the, the checkering still feels top notch even today, the bolt action's buttery smooth, the list does go on and on and on. Um, and they're not 
overly ex well they are but they're not that massively expensive are they? On, if you have a look on certain websites you can see they go for around the 400 the 450 pound mark depending on the condition and such like that and to be honest it, they are worth it I think they are genuinely worth it you have to make sure you get a good one and I'm sure there are people out there um, there's a guy online called the air gun clinic and he's a really top bloke and he'll take it in and completely resurface it for you do the regulator even crowning the barrel and such like that um, you can get them done still but it just might be a little bit more expensive and harder to do than say a modern rifle um, but overall yeah I think it's one of those guns that everybody needs to at least try and shoot once before they call themselves a proper air gunner um, and that's coming from a Springer man so that's very hard for me to admit that um, I sort of put it in the same leagues as sort of like the I think the Realm Tornado that's another one everybody really needs to try one before they call themselves an air gun enthusiast and a bit like the SMK B2 as well to be honest which I might also review which should be quite fun um, but yeah I do highly recommend the BSA Super 10 but just bear in mind the reliability issues and obviously that magazine um, but I, I think you will find it to be an incredibly enjoyable rifle like I have